let's go ahead and get started. Just a little bit about us. We're, we're, we're partnered with um, three companies, uh, three vendors, uh, Symantec, ServiceNow, and Microsoft. We are a, in the context of Symantec, we're a Symantec um, national you know, platinum partner. We hold all of their highest technical distinctions and accreditations. Uh, we deliver services on behalf of about 15 other uh, uh, partners in the, in the semantic ecosystem, uh, as well as ServiceNow ecosystem. And uh, we are focused on uh, Fortune 500 mostly, and we serve um, you know, some of the largest uh, retail, financial, uh, healthcare, government organizations that we uh, that that fit in that uh, in that Fortune 500 segment. We are headquartered in in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but again, we're national national presence. We have uh, resources and uh, and staff uh, all over the country. Want to make everyone aware that we have some great content available on our website. You can download these uh, there or request. Um, printed copies uh, from an account manager or from myself, some really good thought leadership around a lot of topics that are, that are, that are top of mind today. So the, the world has changed. As, as I said, I've, I've got uh, just over 20 years of experience here, and while I feel young at heart, uh, my hair is gray and, and, and my belly's getting big. Um, I've been in this business a while. It's certainly not a, as long as uh, you know a lot of other people that I know, but seen some interesting things in the last 20 years and um, you know, we have a, 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 a pretty consistent belief system across our company around what's going on and how the world has changed and I'm excited to share that with you today. So we observe uh, you know, the last 40, 50 years in technology um, as eras or eras of IT. Um, three years ago uh, we moved into another era another discrete era of IT and, and there's an uprising of organizations who are treating user experience uh, near or, or even in some cases equal to all of the other IT priorities uh, in areas or domains. But I want to talk about this slide for a minute and, and look back because we are living in very interesting times and any Mr. Robot fans out there, think of Christian Slater you know, sliding back on the subway train Interesting times indeed. So with each era, there's been a pause or a hesitation to solve uh, enterprise security uh, in spite of our appetite doing it, to do it sooner rather than later. Uh, many times it's later. It's getting better, um, but I think we all know where we stand. Um, it's kind of like uh, you know, the introspection. You're, you're always honest with yourself. You may not be honest you know, outward. Uh, or externally, but you're always honest with your, yourself. Um, so going back in time here, going back in the days of the green screens, you know, there were few uh, people motivated to write bad code. Uh, trashing physical memory and other components uh, were the flavor, you know, kind of like firecrackers. For companies that even had computers, the data was obfuscated, and we didn't have the technological lifestyle or environment to really perpetuate the fraud that we see today. So when we, when we got into the swing of the PC era, Windows gained its share of the enterprise with desktops and servers. Um, society was focused on securing the perimeter. Hacking was about notoriety and was largely <laughs> driven by the misguided youth. Um, and in the internet era, where, where my career really took off, malware really started to diversify and mature, taking real advantage of Windows uh, and the bi-directional nature of the internet. So while securing the perimeter remained a priority, the shift to protecting information became very, very real. So the data at the time was still on premises and it started growing like crazy, right? So the threats got way more interesting when sophistication increased around them. Uh, threat toolkits exploded and humans uh, began to focus on directing these weapons in very, very targeted ways. So the social and the technology and the motivations uh, and just everything going on just, just threw gas on this. It just threw nitroglycerin on this. So the internet allowed us to make these copies of data. It's spilling everywhere um, and it's even going into the cloud. So this, this notion of being kind of cloud 1.0 uh, 
uh, in the internet toward the end of the internet era there. And if you look at the news, it's telling us every week that organizations are still scrambling to solve many of the problems of the previous eras. So there, there are several influences, I believe, uh, and we at ITS believe, but a huge one is the fact that this workload has been cumulative for IT. So the, the, most of the infrastructure and tools from the previous two eras are still responsibility, and many are, frankly, still maturing. So now we're in this world where breaches, data loss, virus outbreaks, stories are circulating weekly or even monthly. We're, we're getting an opportunity in the era of experience to reduce this gap uh, or hesitation that we've seen uh, that's been inevitable to solve the problems with how a workforce works and plays in this connected and, and at the same time distributed world. Developer and gamer dilemma, it's very similar to IT and users. Uh, control the track or let the gamer play how they want. Well, the gamers have decided, right? So they're, they're, they've surrendered and they're letting them do it. it. The equivalent, it's happening in IT. And users, they expect freedom uh, over how they work and, uh, you know, driven by, uh, you know, consumeration of devices and uh, the amount of them. So the, the previous user definition, if it was a, a headquarters or a regional office, you know, you've got some sort of uh, uh, enterprise security stack, right? Well, that, that was the previous definition. It's gotten more complex now in that you've got remote users coming into the headquarters, so that made securing those individuals and those people uh, a challenge and, you know, not letting out uh, too much of the, of the good stuff or allowing in the bad stuff. But now with the proliferation of, of cloud apps, uh, whether it's people going through the headquarters or the offices all funneling through, you know, the main headquarters, now you have users uh, that are going directly to those services, you know, through this crazy connected world. Um, it seems like a business that doesn't have public Wi-Fi has become more the exception than those that, that, that do provide it. So if you can get it at a rural gas station in the middle of the Midwest, uh, we are living in interesting times. Truckers need high speed too, wireless. <laughs> so, you know, the personal devices, yeah, we talked about that. So the perimeter has completely vanished, um, but that kind of sounds defeating. To me, I, I like to think about it more as it's merely expanded. Um, it seems a little uh, hopeless or a little crazy or, you know, hard to put things in a, in a container or, or in a bucket. The bucket has no bottom, uh, but I think it's it's kind of simple. So, what's the problem in this pet cloud generation? You know, we're probably thinking, aren't the app vendors focused on security? Why why do I have to worry about this? Isn't this the whole point? Well, they are they are focused on security, but they're focused on the infrastructure, preventing impact, you know, to their to their environment. Right? They're they're protecting it against denial of service. Malware outbreaks, like a real outbreak, as opposed to just uh, a threat leveraging, you know, uh, a vulnerability. Outbreaks, um, significant data exfiltration events, right? So from their data center, what's important is that the, the risk that you, an IT organization, has to solve is leakage of sensitive corporate data. So when that data is stored in a SaaS application and not properly controlled, as you would expect, the result is an inadvertent or malicious leakage of that company data. Um, and it's often done through theft of user credentials, uh, just overall violation of compliance. So if you, if you have compliance, if you're trending in the right direction, if you're demonstrating due care and diligence within your four walls, you know, we need to be looking at, at your SaaS uh, uh, approach and that whole, uh, that whole strategy. The SaaS vendor is securing the app and its underlying infrastructure but we have to separate the need for you to protect the information as well as the user. So last summer, Symantec and Bluecoat came together, uh, both being market leaders, Symantec really having their reputation at the end point, some other strong franchises, um, but really the most notable uh, at the end point, and, and Bluecoat for their network uh, and cloud leadership. So two darlings in the marketplace came together and uh, 
it's interesting what they've what they've done even in the first seven months or really more like three or four months they unclogged um, I think a problem that a lot of us saw I think we didn't stop believing in Symantec but the 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 reputation that you know innovation had stalled and stopped was definitely there right so that that definitely happened um, but that is not the case anymore they have pulled that out and even in the first I think it was three maybe four months they had their global intelligence networks connected they had SEP and proxy integrated to give you uh, integrated web security with the endpoint DLP and proxy SGE they were already uh, buddies working collaboratively for DLP with uh, you know with the ICAP uh, uh, relationship as well as uh, uh, cracking open SSL and then there's a DLP connector to the elastic uh, uh, CASB which we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about today so they have been very very busy they are back to integrating I believe we're going to see a lot of innovation coming forward I think Symantec is on a significant rebound so looking at the portfolio you've got these four sections information as a focus the user the devices are still important um, but we really need to focus on the user as the main control plane the devices is, uh, is, is another part of the road to get there but really uh, the buck stops with the users on the website <clears throat> this is where blue coat is really bringing you know a lot to the table to help really represent uh, you know quite a behemoth in the security world between the maturity of of these two companies and their place in the market and then the messaging or collaboration piece so this is the high level representation of how the portfolio is, is laid out uh, within the web you've got these four pieces here this is all blue coat I expect they're gonna bring yellow and blue together between you know the legacy ATP stuff uh, their monitoring service uh, their deep site intelligence I mean there's just all kinds of great stuff uh, sitting around here waiting to be uh, folded together so uh, I would not bet against them on that I think they're gonna do it so let's talk a little bit more about CASB let's kinda get into this so fourth era opportunity we need to allow the cloud allow the workforce to to collaborate uh, safely right so cloud apps and services they streamline collaboration among the users regardless of the platforms uh, the apps are improving user experience and now is the time to embrace it I think uh, and this kind of applies to me personally too because I'm, I'm kind of going through my own acceptance and realization and, and uh, of this uh, this point in technology and at the same time we need to understand the risks and 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 respond so in this fourth era IT they they need to automate procurement installation and customization of software I mean we we we've saw this coming for a couple of years we have the opportunity to streamline all of this given the technology influences at hand so subscription models very in right now given organizations that pay-as-you-go model uh, not, the men, not to mention the potential for IT to focus less on serving and securing applications and more what drives revenue uh, for the company. So choice, I mean who doesn't like choice? Cloud apps are growing at a tremendous rate and again I'm even transforming my thinking admitting that as a user of technology I can be a little old school. Um, you know I, I still, I, <laughs> I'm still saving data locally uh, but I'm trying to break it. I'm trying to trying to trying to give in to where things are going. So I'm a believer uh, more and more, uh, and I'm seeing the benefits as a as a consumer professionally uh, as well as uh, personally, uh, and even within my family. So uh, choices choices are definitely a good thing. We need to rethink the security stack. So the 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 outside has become the inside. The cloud has become the de facto extended enterprise. The genie is out of the bottle. We, we are still in a hybrid world, but the genie is definitely out of the bottle. The layers of technology used today have a serious blind spot when it comes to this stuff. So your traditional IDS, IPS, firewalls, vulnerability management, um, on-premise SIM, DLP, these were all designed to protect the assets owned and operated by IT, not necessarily third-party uh, tools hosted outside the organization and accessible virtually anywhere, right? 
So the good news, it's a, actually great news, is once you embrace a cloud services strategy, security can be almost by design instead of the latent response that we've seen in all the other previous IT eras. Uh, and then lastly, you know, BYOE or your mobile device management or your application management on your, 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 your mobile strategy told us this was coming. We saw, we saw this coming years ago, two years ago at least. So it's really pretty easy. It's still about threats and information um, protection or, or uh, keeping you know, the bad stuff out and the good stuff in or private. Most of the well-defined cloud apps have got APIs that are available that can be leveraged for monitoring activity, uh, analyzing the content that's being passed through them, and applying the controls where it's important or where you need to meet a regulatory uh, influence or, or, uh, or compliance. So sitting between the, the workforce and cloud apps, uh, these gateways, uh, I think um, Elastica or Symantec calls them gatelets, uh, trying to get some cute naming convention in there. Uh, it kind of reminds me of applets, which reminds me of Java, which is a sore subject that I won't get into, but it did pop in my head. So provide um, this provides you the policy enforcement and actually can take the action. Think of this like as your proxy um, in the cloud, right? Integration, something that's been lacking from a lot of the enterprise security and what we've been dealing with for the last two eras. We need to integrate this stuff that's on site with your existing web proxies and firewalls uh, to help, channel, uh, help analyze uh, shadow IT activity. We can leverage those logs and a lot of that stuff that's in there to get visibility. The need to encrypt or, or tokenize content to enforce that policy, that's huge. So applications like SFDC where, you know, we want to tokenize this stuff because we have sensitive customer information that's being passed uh, through different fields and different data uh, uh, fields, tables, and we need to apply encryption, we need to uh, apply tokens so that, you know, only the appropriate and authorized people are, are able to see that information and access that through, uh, you know, through the web. These are the fundamentals right here of, uh, securing cloud apps comprehensively. Organizations need the visibility and in the, in, in the analysis of these cloud apps. Security teams, they, they want to identify the apps that pose the risk to their environments. They're, they're telling us. It's finally happening where there were some deniers out there about, ah, you know, we, don't, we, we have time on the cloud. Well, it, it's starting to move. And I think Microsoft was the, the, the big blast in the side of the boat with Office 365. I mean, there were lots of little other little things kind of going on with, with some of the other uh, Workday, uh, Salesforce, you know, CRM. There's, there's a number of other, even LinkedIn and, and, and Facebook and some social media. But <clears throat> some of the business uh, level cloud apps, now it's out, and now it's out there, and I think Microsoft uh, is to thank or blame, depending on how you look at it. So, again, we want the visibility, and this is done by leveraging the intelligence about the apps themselves. So where the controls are weak, it's obvious that it poses the greatest risk. Knowing what apps are hosted in, in, in rogue states, for example, uh, you, if you're a financial organization, you may want to know that. If you're a healthcare organization, you may want to know that. A um, number of different use cases there to be mindful of. But a, a maturing IT organization is likely to want to get ahead of this and examine that cloud app usage and factor um, against some good risk analysis to aid in the selection of what they're going to approve and, and, and sanction and uh, allow to be used by the workforce. Prevention, you know, that, that didn't work. That, that gave way to detection and good detection is going to be behavior-based going forward. That's the game changer, is behavior. Uh, we have to, as a society, be focusing more on behavior. And that's where big data, data science, and user behavior analysis comes into play with cloud services. So again, security by design. Uh, embrace it, lean into it, and you can have it. Any significant deviation, uh, combination of suspicious event triggers, uh, would take appropriate notification or apply policies to quarantine or block uh, someone's activity. So, like, if somebody was screenshotting, emailing, 
deleting the screenshot, uh, that'd be a flag. Multiple failed login attempts, you know, that's, that's an age-old uh, check uh, flag. Large, uh, large number of files shared, uh, definitely flag. So getting that, that analytics, uh, again, we're in a great time, um, and what a cloud access security broker brings you is the ability to, to get that user uh, behavior analysis. A good one has got that built in it. DLP, absolutely evolving due to this. It's merely an extension of this. Think of this as another control point. Email, by far, has been the primary vector to solve with DLP. Most organizations dive right on that when they want to they solve email because that's where people collaborate. It's what the fact, de facto, you know, application for sharing uh, information. Um, I'm lousy with it. Email became the de facto way of sharing and collaborating, but this has given way from attached files to links embedded in the messages. So you see why that's hard to catch now, right? This means that the problem is moved, or again, we're, per, per, we're presenting a small one of those gaps in what we already saw for yesterday and that the, the problem is, has evolved. So at least half of the organizations that we talk to about DLP, they're building off benefits obtained in some sort of data classification initiative. So they're trying to take the game beyond, you know, simple keyword searchability, treat their information like currency. And that those layers of, of, of analysis at a, at a contextual level, that allows for advanced detection capability and following in the footsteps of good information protection, uh, a good CASB provider applies these techniques as well. So that good pre-work data-wise, which is classification, combined with that advanced detection, and that's possible through the data science, gives you a stable pedestal to enforce your policy. So rather than just block the cloud apps uh, like Nick Burns would, like many today, instead, um, block behavior or encrypt specific information uh, and allow your workforce to, uh, to do their thing. So this is where you can get it right with regard to response, something that DLP customers experienced that weren't able to be aggressive in defining effective and automated response. You know, they got stuck in visibility or they got stuck in remediating things and never got down that risk reduction over time proposition. And now you could predefine your key responses for cloud services uh, and just author authorize your workforce, what they can transfer, what they can, what apps they can use. Um, it's just DLP policy extended to the cloud, and it's much simpler and potentially much faster than how we solved DLP inside the four walls over the last decade. So this is a um, kind of like a graphical representation of the modules of the architecture, the control points, uh, the storage, the data at rest, the data at use or data at the endpoint, data in motion. You know, DLP management console, the cloud merely becomes, you know, another uh, control point to think of. But, uh, you know, the, the, the age-old, um, you know, mantra from Vont to discover, monitor, and protect uh, definitely, uh, definitely applies in this, uh, this hybrid architecture. And just looking at the same, you know, kind of view a little bit differently within each of these areas, these are the, 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 the products or the modules within each group. Focusing on the cloud on the right there, you've got the service connector, uh, the securelet, uh, that is the API uh, connection to the app. Broad, broad support uh, from Symantec on the, on the cloud apps and that API integration. The gatelet, again, that's your, your proxy in the cloud. Think of that as a proxy between you, uh, between your users and uh, the cloud services or applications. So traits of leading CASB solutions. I've done a lot of research and a lot, talked to a lot of people, uh, and basically it comes down to these elements. Support the use cases broadly and provide the API integration for, you know, majority of the apps that you've got out there. Uh, you need to hit 80% of them or better. Provisioning, this simply, um, you know, makes makes deployment of a of a CASB uh, easier. So a lot of this is a is a service. Uh, there is some you know some um, uh, some consultative benefit here, but 
you definitely can benefit from the experts uh, who can fast track the configuration and retrofit this into your existing DLP program and infrastructure. But uh, integration with the IT security stack is also important. You can leverage logs from those things, as I was saying earlier, from uh, firewalls, uh, other gateways that you may have uh, in the four walls. And then visibility, that transfers uh, to control very quickly. So instead of you know, having to remediate, having to go through this exhaustive notification phase between the lines of business and your users that are uh, uh, committing violations, the risk reduction over uh, time proposition just got reduced significantly, which is really great. <clears throat> so let's double click a little bit into the into what the CASB uh, solution looks like. And again, this is a, a nice graphical representation, kind of shows you uh, you know the 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 four walls down in the enterprise perimeter down in the lower left, and you've got you know your outside perimeter. You've got your cloud apps up there. You've got the APIs kind of connecting back to the to the Symantec or the Elastica uh, platform and framework. This is where risk uh, reduction catapults forward in a great way. So we're addressing the specific risks cloud services represent and solving them faster this round or in this next era. Uh, and when you add up all this power and capability on the right. It's like defense in depth within the cloud, right? So it's like DID within DID. <laughs> Hopefully you're applying macro level DID, but this is very specific defense in depth. It's, uh, it's a good CASB solution handles the complete life cycle of identification and visibility as well as control. So we want to detect the risky apps uh, or violations of information governance, um, potentially controlling that stuff and providing the data science and the integration with the rest of IT security to address uh, you know, this lack uh, since the beginning of the last uh, IT era. So <clears throat> do this across public Wi-Fi, home office, remote office, vehicles. You know, uh, I always make the joke about uh, at ITS about you know, there's toys that are trying to talk to my children now, talking Barbies. So visibility shadow IT, shadow IT is a thing. Uh, we overcame this even within our uh, organization at ITS. We had a lot of uh, we had a lot of shadow IT. Some uh, bigger offenders, uh, they know who they are. But we've overcome that. Um, you know, this is this is our part in securing the cloud, um, and it's still about threats again and, and privacy. And what's interesting is that we typically separate these into different silos of security. At least I do. Um, you know, a yin and a yang, uh, the red and the blue, uh, privacy and threats, bad stuff, good stuff. We see, think of them separately, but this CASB model brings them together. And it could be an example of, you know, technology consolidation while it's being also redistributed. So. I don't know, kind of not to get too profound, but it's, uh, again, it's interesting times. And then across the bottom, you're, you're getting this, you know, single pane of glass, a cloud sock, if you will, uh, that's giving you the web security that, you know, provides that gateway or that proxy in the cloud and take your information governance strategy and extend that, you know, into your cloud apps and services. And uh, you know, just manage this stuff better. We have a we have a great opportunity for security by design. The first, uh, what I would say, at least to, to my knowledge, holistic DLP approach uh, for the hybrid cloud that we're living in at this point um, in the fourth era. So there, there again, there's two clear leaders combined uh, this fast. And when I think about the blue coat pieces, the rest of the blue coat pieces that fit in here in the way of, of, uh, of, of proxy and their security analytics platform and the SSL visibility, even beyond the proxy SG or the SWG tool, my, my nerdometer just goes crazy. So I'm, I'm really excited about this stuff and, 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 and proud to be part of it. So conclusions kind of kind of bring it a, bring it around here. Uh, we're doing pretty good on time. Maybe able to give some people a little bit of time back. Uh, we'll have time to take a couple questions obviously. So let's 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 recognize that the the outside again has become has become the inside and a new category 
of security tools uh, are emerging um, and they're cloud, they're called uh, Cloud Access Security Broker or CASB. We're in this era, this new era of IT where productivity and protection are, are at odds and IT is no longer ruling. Uh, the users have taken over. Uh, a lot of people were, were, were able to see it. Whether they did anything about it or whether or not you've done anything about it, you definitely have to recognize that it's happened or, or in some cases it's happening. Some industries in some areas uh, sooner than later or, or than others. So the need to simplify and become more effective, um, it's totally at odds with demands IT is put against every day. Again, a cumulative workload over the, 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 the previous two eras, including the one we're in. Too many things are coming together at once, uh, all with a shift. You know, we, we need a shift in mindset. It's, 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 we're, we're, we're desperate for this. IT cannot keep up. So we should be looking at every computer uh, as a mobile device. I mean, Microsoft is doing this. They're of that mindset. The data's on the move. We, we need to recognize where you are um, in all of these things that are going on. And take those use cases uh, that you need, especially if you're going to go from resisting to, uh, you know, cooperating or enabling your workforce. You need to support all the use cases. Um, so you need broad, you know, use case support, and there, there are quite a few. Uh, and then provide that API integration for majority of the apps out there that, that, that are being leveraged or, or you want to sanction. And if you don't know which ones are risky, you know, get an evaluation of this stuff or, or get some reports from the analysts uh, or Symantec around these are the, you know, top offending apps. Uh, these are some of the problems with it. We have a great opportunity for education here and uh, we can help each other a great deal if we just share. So compare that and, and, and mobilize, right? I mean, a little mobile pun there, but leverage that to prioritize your plan and get a plan and then connect this back to your DLP program and, and give it a physical while you're there. Uh, or use this cloud opportunity to work backward within your four walls if you haven't so solved your true uh, priorities and, and greatest areas of, uh, of, of risk within, uh, within, the, uh, within the enterprise. So we did really good. I was, uh, I was feeling bad about 34 slides and uh, we actually did pretty well, everyone. So I would love to take a couple of questions and then I, I think I'm gonna make the judgment call of, uh, of being considerate of time since we ended so well. And uh, the first question I've got is, Will semantic DLP cloud for O365 work here? Okay, so if I if I understand the question, we're we're talking about semantics legacy uh, Casby like uh, cloud protection for DLP. So this was semantics attempt, I believe, at uh, you know addressing the gorilla. In the in the in the cloud market with Office 365, and they came up with a um, you know a good response to that with a connector. Let me uh, let me bring this home. So the question is, will Semantic DLP Cloud for Office 365 work here? So I believe it's an either or proposition. So um, there there's a, a a ton of integration with going on with the CASB piece. But this, this again, was, was Symantec's legacy uh, cloud security aimed at Microsoft. So if, if you're evaluating, you know, cloud apps uh, and your coverage goes beyond Office 365, you, you really can, should consider a full CASB solution. If your cloud strategy, you know, if you're a smaller organization or depending on what your company does and, and how things are set up, and all you're going to be leveraging is Office 365, then the semantic DLP solution will, will suit you well uh, for the foreseeable future. But most organizations, you know, they need broader coverage. So if you own that module today from Symantec, you know, you may want to be looking at uh, uh, flipping that over to a CASB when it comes time to evaluate uh, or renew that, uh, that subscription. So hopefully that answered your question. 
The other one that I've got here is uh, classification. Will my uh, current classification software feed a CASB? So I, I don't believe so. Uh, so with like, you know, CASB again, one of the benefits is the, is the visibility and the integration into the apps in order to see the data uh, and understand that context. So you're getting the data for classification from the CASB. That's what you're getting. You're getting classification from the get-go uh, with, the, with the tool. So again, it's kind of that, that, that security by design um, uh, mindset, right? So that's the, the, the APIs, you know, the data science uh, being applied and being leveraged. So your current, you know, think of that as more classification for the four walls. If you, if you have a, uh, um, you know, Titus or you have the data insight tool, you know, whatever classification initiative you may have, that is going to still, you know, apply to your four walls. But CASB, you're getting that as part of it. So they're they're solving that for us from the get go, which is which is definitely a good thing. Hey, I really appreciate everyone joining and and listening to the to the to the to my ramblings today. Um, hopefully, I'll see you at another webinar. Uh, you can reach out to me through email uh, or phone or connect with me on LinkedIn. Look for uh, you know some of the some of the pieces, uh, some of the thought leadership that we're going to be have uh, we're going to be releasing. We've got some new materials all around securing the cloud. They're going to be coming out, so be sure to check back with us. And I hope to see you on another uh, webinar someday soon. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.